Hello everybody. Today I'm going to show you the parts of a sheep brain. You know that brain is the most powerful organ of the body and it is also the most mysterious structure or organ. A lot of the brain activities are still unknown. First, I'm going to show you the structures that you can see from the outside, okay? So, this is a sheep brain. Human brain is much bigger in size. Uh, sheep brain is much smaller. Uh, the human brain you can hold on your palms like this. So, it is much bigger uh, than the sheep brain. However, the structures you can see in a sheep brain um, are very similar to a human brain. So, <clears throat> first, I will show you the covering of the brain. So, since the brain is a very delicate and soft jelly-like structure, it is heavily protected in your body. If you see the structures protect your brain from outside to inside, you know that scalp, the skin of your head, and then you have the cranial bones, and under the cranial bones, you have meninges. Meninges are the connective tissue coverings of the brain, okay? And there are three meninges. Outermost one is the toughest and thickest one. That is called the dura mater. You don't see that here. Uh, then second layer is the arachnoid matter. And innermost layer is the pia matter, okay? The innermost pia matter is very thin and it is attached to the surface of the brain. So I can show you the innermost pia matter, which is closely attached to the surface of the brain. So you can see here that I, I am trying to peel um, the pia matter and you can actually do it. So this is the pia matter. If you look carefully, I have uh, uh, already peeled a little bit of it. So it is attached to the surface of the brain uh, and difficult to separate, right? So this is the innermost meninges, pia matter, okay? Here, you can see this one, okay? And uh, under the pia matter, you have the brain tissue. Now, first, let's talk about the parts of the brain. When you see the brain, the largest part, you see this whole part is like a sphere. This is called the cerebrum. So this whole part is the cerebrum, the largest part of the brain. And the cerebrum is separated into two hemispheres by the sagittal or longitudinal fissure. The fissure is a deep groove or slit. You see here, this is, I am trying to remove the perimeter here to show you the longitudinal fissure that separates the cerebrum into what? Two hemispheres. Hemi means half into two halves. Okay. So here, you see, this is the longitudinal fissure, this one. Okay. And this is the right hemisphere. This is the left hemisphere. And two hemispheres together form the cerebrum, which is the sphere, right? And if you see the surface of the cerebrum, you can see many shallow grooves 
here you can see those by the dark lines and these shallow groups are called sulci and why you see the dark lines because in those sulci you have the blood vessels so those blood vessels are dead blood vessels here right uh, and shown by the dark lines okay now uh, in between two sulci the ridges are called the gyri so let me show you this is one sulcus this line and this is another sulcus and in between this area is called a gyrus okay so this is a gyrus this is another gyrus so this is another gyrus so between the sulci you have the gyri makes sense and why in the cerebrum you have so many sulci the grooves make the surface area of the cerebrum much larger than you can see so if you make all those folds straight then the area will be huge it's like you know uh, a curtain when you fold keep the curtain folded then it takes small space right but when you spread it gets big wide same way you know these grooves sulci uh, increases uh, increase the total surface area so many functional areas are located on the surface of the cerebrum and the surface is called the cerebral cortex okay and now if you see each hemisphere it has four lobes this part is the frontal lobe in the front okay so this is the frontal lobe and behind the frontal lobe you have the parietal lobe here and then all the way back this is the occipital lobe okay this part so occipital lobe parietal lobe and the frontal lobe in the front okay and below the parietal lobe this area is called the temporal lobe so how many lobes four lobes frontal parietal temporal and occipital okay and then uh, if you see another part of the brain which is located posterior and slightly below that means inferior this structure is called the cerebellum so this larger structure is the cerebrum and this one which is posterior that means behind and slightly below the cerebrum this is called the cerebellum okay and if you see the cerebellum cerebellum also have many groups if you look carefully you can see many groups in the cerebellum and the groups separate the cerebellum into many lobules okay many small lobules and in the middle of the cerebellum uh, you can see another structure that is called the vermis of the cerebellum vermis v e r m i s okay so this is the cerebellum and this large part is the cerebrum okay then another part you can see here this is called if you see the bottom surface of the brain you can see more clearly this part is called the brain stem okay so brain stem is here and brain stem consists of three structures or three parts if we see the most front part this is the midbrain okay this is midbrain and then this kind of round structure here you see kind of elevated this part is called the pons and this part is called the medulla oblongata so from uh, behind if i go towards the front this is the medulla oblongata okay and this kind of round part is the pons and this is the midbrain okay midbrain 
and in front of the midbrain if you look carefully uh, this round structure this, this is called the mammillary body there are two mammillary bodies so it is a paired structure two kind of round structures these are the mammillary bodies the mammillary bodies are the structures uh, related to memory okay memory uh, consolidation is the function of the mammillary bodies the term mammillary came from the term mammary gland you know mammary gland is the female breast and uh, since these two structures when the anatomist first uh, identified these structures uh, they named these uh, as mammillary bodies because of their round breast like form or a structure okay and then in front of the mammillary bodies you have the optic chiasma where two optic nerves meet okay so uh, the brain stem has three parts midbrain pons medulla oblongata and then below the medulla oblongata this is the spinal cord it continues like this this is just the uppermost part of the spinal cord you can see here makes sense so then another part which is located inside the brain so i'll show you uh, later after i dissect the brain that is called the diencephalon which is mostly located inside okay so those are the four parts of the brain cerebrum consists of two hemispheres then cerebellum then the brain stem consists of three parts right midbrain pons medulla oblongata and then diencephalon is located inside okay now i'll uh, dissect the brain into two halves through the longitudinal fissure and try to see inside okay so you can use the scalpel this blade and hold it uh, you know above the sharp blade uh, don't just hold close to the blade make sure that your fingers are way above uh, and holding uh, in the middle of the shaft okay and then uh, also make sure your fingers are not along the line of dissection that you know can cause an accident and you may cut your finger you don't want to do that right so i have just dissected through the longitudinal or sagittal fissure okay into two halves now i'll see inside okay so let me show you the things you can see here okay so here you see a very nice structure you see like a, a belt this is called the corpus callosum so you can see here this one is the corpus callosum okay and then below the corpus callosum you see here i i am opening this pretty large space cavity this is called the lateral ventricle okay it contains the cerebrospinal fluid comes from the choroid plexus secretion of the choroid plexus and below the lateral ventricle this belt like structure this is called the fornix okay so i am showing again this is the corpus callosum this one and lateral ventricle here and this is the fornix okay and fornix uh, is a very important structure because it connects the hippocampus to the mammillary body you remember i showed you the round mammillary bodies uh, here so the fornix 
transmits the signal, memory signal from the hippocampus, which is also related to memory, to the mammillary body, okay, and uh, helps information and recall of the memory, okay. So, memory recalling and formation is the, are the functions of the fornix and it connects the hippocampus to the mammillary body and corpus callosum this structure is also very important because through the corpus callosum lot of fibers go from one hemisphere to the other so interhemispheric connection is the function of the corpus callosum connects one hemisphere to the other okay so two hemispheres can talk to each other through this structure corpus callosum now here you see a tiny round structure this is just half of it uh, this is the pineal gland okay so this is the pineal gland here you can see here this is also a very important gland pineal gland is responsible for the circadian rhythm that means sleep awakeness cycle or day night cycle we sleep at night feel sleepy right and stay awake during the day so that is regulated by the pineal gland also it secretes melatonin a chemical that is also related to sleep okay and then if i draw like an egg like chicken egg here this part is called the thalamus so you see here if i just try to draw an egg here this is the thalamus very important it is called the major sensory relay station almost all sensory signals are processed here before they go to the cerebrum okay so before the sensory signals are taken to the cerebrum the sensory signals like touch pain temperature your vision uh, sight audition hearing all those sensory signals are processed here okay very important measure sensory relay station and below the thalamus this is the hypothalamus this area hypo means below right so hypothalamus hypothalamus is also very important because it controls the pituitary gland pituitary gland is just located below the hypothalamus here they have removed it uh, it is not uh, here but should be here and below the hypothalamus and hypothalamus controls the pituitary gland secretion of the pituitary gland also hypothalamus regulates the food and water or fluid intake how much you will eat and drink that is controlled or regulated by the hypothalamus hypothalamus also regulates the body temperature right so those are few very important functions of the hypothalamus clear okay and thalamus this oval shaped structure here hypothalamus just below the thalamus and the pituitary gland which is located here those three structures together is the diencephalon you remember i said the fourth part of the brain which is located inside that is the diencephalon consists of the thalamus hypothalamus and the pituitary gland it clear okay now this is inside the cerebellum so if you look carefully here you can see white tree like structure and that is called the arbor vitae or arbor vitae tree like branched structures whitish color okay so arbor vitae inside the cerebellum cerebellum is mainly responsible for maintaining the balance and equilibrium of the body okay so when you walk or you know bike your balance body body position and balance equilibrium those are regulated by the cerebellum okay also uh, if you see here the uh, fissure that separates the cerebrum 
and the cerebellum this is called the transverse fissure so this is the transverse fissure here okay going transversely like this okay so longitudinal fissure separates two hemispheres going this way anteriorly and transverse fissure uh, going transversely like this right and it separates the cerebrum and the cerebellum okay so those are the parts of the brain you can clearly see here now if we see the bottom surface of the brain uh, you can see here just below the frontal lobe this is the olfactory bulb there are two olfactory bulbs and olfactory bulbs receive the smell signal from the olfactory nerves and then you see from the bulb a belt like structure you can see here if you look carefully this is called the olfactory tract so olfactory bulb olfactory tract okay and they process and transmit the smell olfaction signal okay and this is again optic chiasma where two optic nerves from your two eyes join optic nerves are not here intact here so from the eyes two optic nerves come like this and join here at the optic chiasma and then divides into two optic tracts optic tracts you can see here okay good so uh, those are the brain structures you can see uh, in the sheep brain okay uh, one more thing i'll show you before i and if you see uh, through the transverse fissure that means if you see uh, look through the space between the cerebrum and cerebellum uh, you can see here two pairs of round kind of round structures these two are upper and these two are lower upper ones are slightly bigger than the lower right so this is one upper this is another this is lower so these are called colliculi so two superior colliculi those are larger and two inferior colliculi so all together four and these are called corpora quadri quadri means four quadri gemina so upper colliculi superior colliculi and inferior colliculi okay um, in the back of the midbrain because you know uh, this is the midbrain here right so if you see the back of the midbrain through the transverse fissure the space between the cerebrum and cerebellum you can see those four round structures those are colliculi superior colliculi processes the visual signal and inferior colliculi process the auditory signal sound okay okay so let's stop here um,